Hey, Phil Plate from BadAstronomy.com here, and I'm doing a live Q&A video chat session. I got a good question from Jason Weitzel, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, who asks, if NASA came to you and asked which moon had the best chance to find microlife, which of the famous three would you pick? Titan, Enceladus, or Europa, and how would you do it? <laughs> this is a good question. One of the biggest questions we can ask is, is there life? out there, out there in space. We know there's life on Earth, hello, and there's a lot of different kinds of life on Earth, and, and some of it's really weird. And we know that it can live in some fairly bizarre conditions here on Earth. But we think it, most of it, if not all of it, evolved from the same sort of proto-bacteria gazillions of years ago, billions of years ago, so it just adapted to the different niches on Earth. So they adapted to the high temperatures, cold temperatures, pressure, and all that. However, could there be life on other planets if the conditions there are good? Now, we know that life on Earth evolved, uh, at least it arose, in conditions that were fairly harsh compared to now. And it probably got wiped out several times and, and popped back up again. So we, we think that the origins of life, given even you know, rough conditions, pop up pretty easily. We think that, that life actually can, can get its start, get a toehold or a pseudopod hold or whatever, um, if the conditions are right. Um, so where else are the conditions right? Now, I get questions all the time. You know, what about ammonia-based life instead of water-based life? What about silicon-based life instead of carbon-based life like we have here? Um, you know, don't worry about those. Those might exist, maybe. We don't know. We do know that life on Earth is based on carbon and needs water. So why not look there first? Okay, that makes it easy because we know those conditions uh, work for life. So where can we find that sort of thing? And it turns out, uh, you know, we, we looked at Mars for a long time. And look, you know what? Mars may still have life on it. It may have evolved life at some point billions of years ago, whatever. Um, we're looking and that's fine. But what's interesting is to ask where could there be life now? And this uh, question got uh, juiced up pretty hard a while back when, it was fig when astronomers figured out that the moon Europa around Jupiter actually is covered in ice and appears to have uh, an, an ocean of liquid water beneath that ice. Now, we haven't seen this ocean directly, but uh, as, as the Voyager probes and eventually the Galileo space probe orbited Jupiter and looked at Europa up close, the surface of it looks like ice flows. It looks like giant chunks of ice that are grinding against each other. And that surface is changing over, over time. I mean, you can see these kind of plates moving. Not only that, there are very few craters on the surface of Europa. Uh, and that means that the surface is being resurfaced. Every body in the solar system that has no erosion on it, our moon, Mercury, other moons of Jupiter, have craters covering them. So if you see a body, like a moon or whatever, that has no craters on it, chances are that means there's some process that's smoothing it over, resurfacing it. So we think there's an ocean underneath Europa's surface, and that, that water bubbles up sometimes and, and freezes and, and forms the surface again. Same thing with Enceladus. This is a moon of Saturn. Not only is it a lot like Europa and that it's very icy, uh, we've also seen water directly because it has geysers blasting out from the South Pole. And we think that's caused by the force of gravity from Saturn. As, as Enceladus orbits Saturn, it, it gets squeezed by the tidal force of, of, uh, of the planet, just like the Earth and the Moon squeeze each other as, as they go around each other. And so this is actually uh, warms, the, warms the Moon up, the same with Europa. And so that why, that's why these tiny moons, I should add, are not frozen ice balls. They're actually being flexed, and that warms them up in the middle, and, and you get this, this liquid water. But in the case of, of Enceladus, this water's under pressure and shoots out of these poles, and we've seen that. You can look up pictures of the geysers on Enceladus. So Europa and Enceladus both have, apparently, liquid water, and we know there's tons of carbon out there and stuff, other stuff that uh, life can be based on. So these are good places to look. And now Titan, which is another moon of Saturn, is huge. It's bigger than Mercury, has a thick atmosphere, which is rich in nitrogen, and it's been discovered that there are lakes on the surface made of, apparently, methane. And it probably rains methane on, uh, on Titan. So there's actually sort of a liquid cycle, kind of like the water cycle on Earth. And it's difficult to figure all this stuff out. We don't have a, a super good view of Titan. Uh, the Cassini spacecraft is orbiting Saturn, and it passes by Titan on occasion, and it uses radar and infrared to pierce that thick atmosphere and, and, and map out the surface. 
but it looks like there's a lot of complex organic chemistry going on on Titan. The question is, is there life? So to answer the question, which of these three would I say is best? You know what? I'm going to wimp out and say, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to say that there's a best chance of life on any of these three moons. They all have something going for them. And I, I suspect very strongly that we should, in the next 20 years, I shouldn't say suspect, I, I, I suggest very strongly that in the next 20 years or so, we send probes, better, better probes to these moons to take a better look at them and see what's going on, to maybe even sample the, the, the surface of these things, or the atmosphere of Titan in this case, uh, which we, we've done with the Huygens probe, which dropped by Cassini to land on the surface of Titan. But I'd like to see uh, better labs sent to these moons to, to taste the chemicals that are there, to see if, if life could arise. That would be sort of the first question. And, of course, to see if life is there. Now, you don't expect to see, you know, little, little fish swimming around or anything like that. But there are definite signs uh, of, of biological life that you can test for. And I think uh, um, that is the sort of thing that, that NASA should be thinking about. The problem is very, very expensive. And this isn't maybe the time to try to make a very super ambitious probe, um, but it's something we should be keeping our minds to uh, because this is a huge philosophical question. Are we alone? And for the first time in the history of mankind, we have a real scientific shot at answering that question.